Yes, hello, Blockbuster? Yes, yes, oh my gosh, I know you guys only have one store left. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to rent Halloween. You don't have Halloween? Okay, how's about a Scream movie? I'm looking forward to any of those. I mean, the first one's the best, but... Oh, no Scream? Oh, okay, oh. You only have Texas Chainsaw Massacre left? Well, looks like it's time to review it then. What's going on guys? This is your boy Leo Rydell and this is Geekly Goods where we talk the latest in movies, TV with a little sprinkly anime and gaming. Hook your boy up with that HBO special, that's the Help Brother Out special y'all. Hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, hit like on this video and today y'all I am here to talk about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The 2022 new film and it's a sequel to the first one just like Halloween 2018 is a sequel to Halloween and Scream is a sequel to Scream 4. Yes, we've got another requel that has the exact same name as the first movie in the franchise. Let's talk a little bit about what this is about, who directed it, and who stars in the movie. The 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre follows Melody, her entrepreneur friends, and her sister Lila who go to the town of Harlow, Texas with hopes of renovating the area. Unfortunately, their arrival ends up reawakening the deadly Leatherface. So this is another requel that has recently come out within the last six or seven months we've had. This is our third one. We've had Halloween, we've had Scream. I mean, I'm sure there are a few more in there that I'm missing, but yeah, it's our third horror requel. Oh my gosh, also Candyman. So we're having a revival of horror requels here. We're having a ton of them and let me be honest, I think this might be bottom of the totem pole here. Yes, maybe even under Halloween Kills for me personally, but let's talk about some things I do like about the film. And I'm going to be real with you guys, there's not a lot, <laughs> but I do like the buildup in the film. The buildup of tension, I think, is really well done towards the beginning. It does set us up for this mystery and for this mysterious thing to happen. Of course, the mysterious thing being Leatherface, and it gives us these chilling vibes and Honestly, I think it does a good job setting itself up. However, a lot of other things are just not really good about this movie. So let me just talk about the things that don't quite work because I think it's a longer list than the things that do work. I mean, hey, the music works a little bit. Some of the acting works, but let's talk about the things that don't work, guys. And honestly, I'm just going to start out with the story itself really just teeters off halfway through the film. Honestly, I like I said earlier, I was liking the setup. I was really liking where things were going at first. And then I just could not stand how it was trying to conclude, you guys. It really just it, it overstayed its welcome. And that's hard to do for a film that's an hour and 23 minutes. But it really, truly overstayed its welcome in that it felt like it kept needing to come to an end and it wouldn't. So that was one big glaring problem I had was the pacing. It just feels like there's too much in this movie and it's weird because it's only an hour 23. And I'm sorry, I just gotta say, I gotta say it, Sally, nothing against the actress. She actually looks a lot like the actress who played Sally. So she does a good job look wise, but that's about it. Unfortunately, she's barely in the movie. Like, sorry, Sally. Just not the best legacy character. Maybe the worst out of the lineup we've seen so far. And I like Elsie Fisher. I really do. I love her in eighth grade. I think she's a great actress with a lot of potential. I don't think this was the movie for her. I just didn't really like the character writing. I will say the acting, they did the best they could with the character writing and the script, which are both really, really poor. The characters, unfortunately, are just not very likable. Most of them are not very likable. I mean, I don't like Leatherface either. So it's just kind of hard to really connect with these characters, but to it, especially in the second half, there was like one thing that made me jump, but it just really overstays his welcome. The kills were pretty cool. I would say the Michael Myers kills were a lot cooler and more entertaining in Halloween Kills, but this was decent, decent. But Leatherface, I don't know, as a slasher villain, kind of sucks. There are moves that characters make that just don't make sense. So the writing is so weak. Story-wise, character-wise, the pacing's pretty bad. Man, there's just not a lot that I can really say that's good about this movie, guys. Like, I, I'm sorry, I just really did not like this new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I, something about it was like a little off for me. Like, what was it trying to say? What was the message behind Leatherface coming back with these new kids trying to 
move into the community what was it really trying to say but guys you got to let me know down in the comments what you thought about this movie look i like the score i like the setup i think there's a really good setup but man it just fails on execution and most other fronts as well. Guys, if I had to give a rating to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I am going with a three out of 10, guys. This is so far the, uh, I think it's the lowest rating I've given to a film this year, guys. So unfortunately, Texas Chainsaw Massacre just didn't do it for you, boy, but you gotta let me know down in the comments how you felt about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because, hey, if you enjoyed it, I'm happy for you. Let's chime in. Let's talk about it. Let me know your thoughts, and if you're new, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button for your boy, and we will see you next time on Geekly Goods.